And for more, we turn to Ramiz Alagbarov, and he's the United Nations resident resident and humanitarian coordinator. Mr. Ramis, thank you very much for joining us. Give us a sense, give us a better sense. What's happening on the ground? What are the most pressing challenges right now? Uh, Afghanistan is in a very difficult situation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the weather and the humanitarian crisis which we're experiencing is deep. Uh, we're talking about 28 million people who need assistance now, out of them 6 million uh, are in extreme levels of food insecurity. Basically, uh, they're hungry and uh, have very little access um, to with ways to sustain themselves. We have a, a deep crisis uh, related to uh, electricity supplies, um, fuel isn't short, and the hospitals, of course, are full of children, uh, malnourished and suffering from diseases such as measles. And uh, it's an overall very difficult situation. Um, we are facing a crisis as it uh, we haven't seen in a long time. And I'm afraid that uh, until the weather improves, uh, we will continue to witness uh, quite a difficult situation on the grounds. Well, the talks with the Taliban government you know, about letting female aid workers, how are they going? How's that going there? What needs to be done before the Taliban will let them into the country? There's the edict uh, banning uh, humanitarian workers, uh, female humanitarian workers from coming to work and delivering aid could not have come at the worst time. We're in the middle of all this uh, difficult winter. And as you know, our principled independent uh, humanitarian response requires presence of women. What does that mean? That means that if we are to assess a household for an assistance. If a female health worker, a female uh, aid worker must be there uh, to, to speak directly to women. It is a very conservative society. Same needs to be uh, happening with the food distribution or let's say administration of uh, any other type of assistance such as distribution of winterization materials, fuel, and in so far. Uh, excluding women out of humanitarian response is not a viable way to sustain uh, response at scale, and uh, it is one of the largest, or probably the largest, humanitarian operation in the world. So this was very untimely and unfortunately very counterproductive edict. Um, some of the ministries have given us exemptions, specifically Minister of Health, so the health workers are back to work. Um, we also have exemptions on the education under the level six. Uh, in the other areas, these exemptions have not uh, have come yet. It's particularly important that it comes soon, uh, otherwise the response will stall. Well, speaking about all this, so how much international aid is Afghanistan getting right now? Does the fact that the Taliban is ruling the country, does that hinder international aid to Afghanistan? Uh, I'm here for three years now, and I must admit that throughout the crisis, international solidarity with the people of Afghanistan stayed strong. Uh, last year, nearly $4 billion were provided uh, to the people of Afghanistan, uh, out of which uh, more than $2 billion were uh, towards the humanitarian response plan. If we're looking at this year, we are uh, asking for $4.8 billion, which is a largest ask we have ever made towards a humanitarian crisis. Obviously, if the female workers are not able to return to work, uh, we will see much lesser enthusiasm from the donors to support this response. And despite of our efforts to convince, uh, it will be very difficult to convince anyone to, to support it. Uh, and we have our principles. The principles are that we don't do harm, which means that our assistance is non-politicized, it's operationally independent, it is um, completely unconditional, but on another hand, it has to comply with the principles. And the most important principle is that both genders, men and women, have to be present at the time of delivery of the aid, have to be able to do the assessments, and have to be able to, to, to be a part of the response. Not having that ability or having that ability handicapped in various sectors creates a serious ramifications and a challenge for fundraising. Well, then, so say that, what can the Afghan government do at this point then to ease the suffering of its people? Well, we had Deputy Secretary General uh, of United Nations, uh, Ms. Amina Mohammed, here. We had UN Emergency and Relief Coordinator, uh, Mr. Martin Griffiths. 
I went together with them in all the meetings with the line ministries, the the, um, uh, with the pri deputy prime minister. They had very serious discussions and made it very clear what are the consequences of not taking the right decisions. What we need now are the exemptions. What we need now are the authorizations. And what we need now is the lifting of this ban which unfortunately comes at a very wrong time and which is absolutely deplorable. And we uh, condemn this ban in strong term and we have asked the de facto authorities of Afghanistan to retreat uh, and take away this uh, limitation so that we can assist the people of Afghanistan. And that's our position. We have put this forward and we have asked uh, for this to happen as soon as possible. Well, let's look at the international community now, because the cold isn't the only problem that Afghans are facing. There's also poverty, terrorism, ineffective government. Would you recommend Western nations drop their sanctions and also call for the U.S. to unblock the Taliban's access to Afghan assets in the U.S. Federal Reserve now? The most important thing which needs to happen about all of those uh, issues which you have raised is the dialogue. The engagement of the de facto authorities and international community must continue to discuss the differences and the implementation of any political roadmap to the resolution of this uh, difficult situation. We all know that the complexity around the political area of work has reflected now on the humanitarian space and on the fate of, uh, of the people of Afghanistan. The people of Afghanistan, in fact, uh, are a hostage of this uh, very, very uh, difficult situation. And obviously, engagement is the only way. It is through that engagement and dialogue with the de facto authorities that the political interlocutors uh, need to find uh, the way forward. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. I've been speaking with Mr. Ramiz Alakbarov, Deputy Special Representative of the UN Secretary General, speaking to us from Kabul. Once again, a brutal cold snap in Afghanistan is threatening to inflict further casualties on an increasingly vulnerable population.